To the uninitiated, the term p-value might sound like a bunch of jargon, but when it comes to evidence-based decision-making, understanding this elusive statistical output is a key to success. Hi, I'm Matthew Courtney, and here we talk all about education research and data. If you're into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel and come be a part of our community. The p-value is a foundational concept in statistics. You will see it reported in basically every research article or data report that you review. The p-value is a statistical measure that indicates the probability of obtaining the observed results or more extreme results if the null hypothesis is true. Huh? It, if that sounded like gibberish, don't worry. It kind of felt like gibberish coming out of my mouth. And you're not alone. In 2015, Christy Ashwaden, a lead science writer for 538, asked a bunch of scientists what the p-value is while she attended a conference, and she basically got no clear answers. Her article is linked below in the description for both your amusement and reassurance. All right, so let's see if we can break it down in a way that makes some sense. The p-value is an output that is tied to hypothesis testing. Before we can understand it, we have to first understand hypothesis testing. In statistics, there are two types of hypotheses. The null hypothesis is the status quo or baseline assumption. It states that there is no effect or difference. The alternative hypothesis is what you aim to prove. It claims that there's an effect or a difference. Whenever a researcher or data analyst starts to look at their data, they are considering these two hypotheses. They want to know if the difference between various sets of scores are different in a statistically significant way. The p-value is how they know that. It quantifies the evidence against the null hypothesis. A smaller p-value suggests stronger evidence against the null hypothesis and in favor of the alternative hypothesis. To put it another way, the smaller the p-value, the more likely it is that a researcher's original hunch was correct. P-values are compared to significance levels, also called alpha levels. Usually, we set this alpha level at 0.05 meaning that if the p-value is less than 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis. And if it is above that, then our results are not statistically significant. Why 0.05? Well, frankly, that's a topic for another video. But in short, it's just one of those things in life that's basically arbitrary yet universally accepted. Okay, so let's put this into a real world context. Consider a school that is piloting a new e-learning platform, hypothesizing that it improves student performance. After testing, they have two options. Either the null hypothesis is true, meaning that the platform makes no difference, or the alternative hypothesis is true, meaning that the platform improves scores. Post-analysis, they find a p-value of 0.03. Since this is less than the threshold of 0.05, there is significant evidence to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the platform likely enhanced student performance. Now, a solid analysis doesn't end there. Before making the decision to keep implementing this online program, the leaders involved should take a look at the measures of central tendency. They should examine the effect size between their sample groups, and they should do some qualitative analysis to examine both the impact and perception of the program by teachers, students, and other shareholders. Making a decision based on statistical significance alone is not advisable. Now, the p-value really starts to make more sense once you put it into practice. So check out some of the other videos in this playlist to see how p-value comes into play throughout a variety of different tests. You can also explore with your own data easily with the free data analysis tools on my website at www.matthewbcourtney.com forward slash repository. If you found value in this video today, make sure to like and subscribe and check out some of the other videos in this playlist. I'll see you next time.